Creek owns and sustainably manages millions of acres of forest land across the country. Here in northwestern Montana, the company owns hundreds of thousands of acres, and we're surrounded by an abundance of remarkable wood species. Lodgepole and ponderosa pine, larch, spruce, alpine, and Douglas fir. Let's look at the ways we use these native, renewable resources to make products that are part of all of our lives. At Plum Creek's Columbia Falls and Evergreen Mills, harvested trees are turned into boards and studs, essential for building homes, cabinets, and even birdhouses. Here, logs are thinly peeled into veneer to make plywood. The leftovers, sawdust, chips, and shavings are ground up and used to make panels at our MDF plant where you'll find the world's largest bug farms. Let's start our tour there. This is the Columbia Falls MDF plant, where two manufacturing lines produce boards from 1 16th to 1 1⁄2 inches thick, in different lengths and widths according to our customers' needs. MDF is medium-density fiberboard, made from two main materials, wood fiber and glue, that is compressed using steam and pressure. MDF board is uniform in color and appearance. It's flexible and strong and used to make furniture commonly found in kitchens and bathrooms. It's also a popular choice for stereo loudspeaker boxes. The wood to make MDF is delivered to the mill in three forms, chips, sawdust, and shavings. These are all recycled materials from our other mill operations. This is the refiner room, the first stop in the process. And this is a 14,000 horsepower refiner motor. The motor turns precision plates that grind up the chips, sawdust, and shavings into this wet fiber, which will now pass through a blow line where glue is added. This is Rubinet 1840, otherwise known as Gorilla Glue. It's one of two glues we use at the MDF mill. The wet fiber and glue mixture exits the blow line to a flash dryer to remove moisture. A lot of steam is generated from the fiber refining process. We clean that wet air and the rest of the air in the mill with our bug farms. The bug farms are actually biofilters that use microorganisms to convert mill byproducts to water and carbon dioxide. We have two bug farms that were both the largest in the world when they were built. Large fans send the mill byproducts through these giant pipes to the bug farms where microorganisms live on submerged rocks. In each bug farm live trillions of microscopic one-celled organisms called heterotrophic bacteria. Their job is to eat all the particulates and byproducts from the mill. So what you see coming out of our mill stacks is more than 99% pure air and water vapor. After the dryers, the fiber is cleaned and sifted using this three-story diamond roll, and then fed to a forming line to produce a mat. Today, we're making 3 8 inch thick boards, measuring 4 by 8 feet. The mat travels through a pre-compressor, which squeezes out as much air as we can prior to pressing the panel. The sheet is cut to width, and then enters the front end of the continuous press. This 28 and a half meter long press has hydraulic cylinders and a stainless steel belt that heats and squeezes the soft panels into hard MDF boards. Here in the forming station, four operators oversee the entire production process. They can control the quality of everything, including moisture, thickness, length, and width to assure consistent quality of the product. After the panels have left the continuous press, they're cut into custom sized dimensions. They then travel through an ultrasonic scan that looks for defects. Defective panels are discarded, ground, and burned to produce heat for the dryers. This is called a star cooler. As the panels leave the press, they're very hot. The star cooler separates and cools them. The panels now go to an automated warehouse to later be sanded to a smooth finish. From the sander, there's a final trimming process using the shilling saw. Here, the length and width of the panels are cut to the customer's exact specification. The panels now go through final inspection. Then, they're automatically stacked, and finally, labeled and packaged for shipment. About 20% of our products leave the mill by truck, but most of our MDF is loaded onto trains for delivery to our customers. This is the Columbia Falls Sawmill. Here we produce pine and spruce boards that are used to build windows, doors, cabinets, and trim. 
we make them 4 to 12 inches wide and up to 16 feet long. And this is the Evergreen Stud Mill. On a typical day, we produce enough fir and larch wood studs, the bones of a home, to reach from Kalispell across the Great Divide. The process for making boards and studs is pretty similar. Let's visit the sawmill and see how we use cants and flitches to make boards. Logs arrive from the forest on trucks and are sorted here in the Columbia Falls log yard. These are sorters, and this is a Laturno. It carries the logs to the bark buck area where the process begins. The bark is removed from the log and burned in a boiler to make steam. Steam is used to make MDF and produce heat to dry lumber. The debarked logs go to the chop saw, where this operator cuts them into lengths of 8, 12, and 16 feet. He's also in charge of making sure the mill has plenty of wood. The logs enter the building, arriving at the infeed of the twin saw. They travel up the log ladder to a laser scanner. The operator scans and then orients the position of the log to maximize wood yield. It's then cut on two sides into cants and slabs. The cant is the main part of the log that will be cut into boards. The slabs are the end pieces. The bigger slabs are sent through the resaw and turned into flitches, which are pieces suitable for making boards. All the leftovers, discarded slabs, sawdust and shavings are ground up and sent to our MDF plant to make panels. Nothing's wasted. This is the gang. The cants are sent here to be scanned and sent to a bank of circle saws that turn the cant into boards. Meanwhile, the flitches go their own way, through the edger, where they're scanned and then cut on two sides to also become boards. We've now turned the cants and flitches into rough boards from 4 to 12 inches in width. His job is to send boards on if they're good. He can also send boards back to be recut or send the leftovers to a chipper for recycling. It's now on to the sorter process, where boards are measured for width and length. The board turner looks for pieces to recycle and make sure there's only one board in each lug on the chain. Single boards are scanned and then trimmed to standard lengths. Now, down the rainbow chain and up the hill to be sorted. Using the data from the trimmer, the horizontal sorter assigns each board a bin. The boards are conveyed down the line until they're dropped in their bin. Full bins are dropped to a chain called the waterfall and fed to the unscrambler which separates the boards and sends them to the stacker. Kiln sticks are placed between each layer of boards in the stack. This assures uniform drying. The stack is now ready for the kiln. These kilns are heated to at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 to 72 hours. The high temperature dries the wood and eliminates any living organisms that could cause harm later. The dried stacks are taken to the planer building for the finishing touches. The planer makes the surface of the boards precise and smooth. Next, graders inspect the boards. Using a large crayon, they mark a grade on the boards and identify those that need more trimming. A machine reads those crayon markings and captures the grade of each piece. A final trim is made for length. And then the boards are grade stamped. The vertical sorter now gently separates the boards according to grade and dimensions. The sorted boards ride up the floor chain to the stacker, where lumber units are made. Those units now go to the banding machine. Here, they're compressed to tidy them up and banded so they stay together on the train ride out. Using staple guns, we apply a weather-resistant wrapper. This package is now ready for a trip by train or truck out to our customers. Plywood is a wood sandwich. There's a face, a back, and cross-grained inner layers that are glued, sewn, and compressed to become sheets. Cross-graining means when the sheets, called veneer, are assembled, the grain direction of each sheet is oriented opposite from the others. This ensures a strong board that resists splitting or shrinking. You'll find plywood almost everywhere. It's used for floors, roofs, walls, ceilings, and cabinets. Plywood comes in many different grades, with A being the most valuable. In this tour, you'll see lasers, robots, plugs and glues being used to make good veneer better and improve the value of our panels. 
It begins here at the Bark and Buck area, where these logs have just gone through the debarker. The stripped logs are then chopped into nine foot blocks using these block saws. Veneer is made from peeling logs into thin sheets. To do this, logs must be very soft. The log blocks are steamed and softened in these 170 degree Fahrenheit garages. 12 hours later, the softened logs arrive at the lathe. They're secured at both ends. A laser scanner is used to position each log for optimized yield. The log is spun against two four-foot-long knives that peel the logs into ribbons. Moments ago, this long, thin ribbon of wood veneer was one whole log. The ribbon enters the clipper, a laser-controlled machine that slices the ribbon and cuts out defects. The full-size sheets will be used for face, back, or center layers. These are sent to the stacker, where they're measured for moisture content and placed in bins. The smaller pieces, called strips and fishtails, are sent to the green chain, where they're sorted by grade and sent along to be made into inner core sheets. Anything damaged or less than eight inches wide is chopped up and sent to the MDF plant. All the veneer now enters a large, multi-zone dryer. The front of the dryer is a hot 400 degrees Fahrenheit. As the sheets move along at 18 feet a minute, the dryer becomes cooler. We now have dried veneer sheets that are about to be scanned and graded. The scanner records every defect, including knot holes, splits, and deep scratches. This information is used to make repairs and upgrade the value of each sheet. The whole sheets are headed to the plug line. They'll become faces and backs. The downgraded sheets are going to the composer to become inner cores. This is the automated plug line, and yes, that's a robot. It uses the scanner information to repair tears and replace knot holes with wood plugs to increase value. This plugger repairs about 80 sheets an hour, and there's a whole army of them. The plugged sheets land on the round table. Instead of robots, it takes a trained human eye to sort these properly. Over at the composer, the strips, fishtails, and downgraded boards are fit together and sent through the string line. String and glue are applied, and out the other end is a whole sheet of core veneer. Here at the layup line, we now have all the ingredients for our wood sandwich. The layup machine sorts the sheets in their proper order and feeds them through the glue station. Here, the sheets are coming out fully glued, and the sandwich is made. Today, we're making four ply, three eighths inch plywood. So, we'll need a face, two cross grain cores, and a back. Here's a face and core, a core, a back, a face and core, a core, a back. Now, the stack of glued veneer sheets spend the next few minutes in the pre-press to allow the glue to set. And then into the charger, which loads the press. The press squeezes and heats the boards to 255 degrees Fahrenheit for about five minutes. We now have plywood panels, but they'll go through one or two more steps to repair blemishes and increase value. The smaller blemishes are filled with putty at the putty line. Bigger repairs are made here on the poly line, where these men use a router and wand carrying poly epoxy to fix holes and splits. Now the saw operator trims and grades each piece and looks for any defects. The panels are then sanded to create a smooth surface. And then we do a final grading before making stacks of shippable plywood. The stacks are banded, stenciled, and stored in the warehouse until their train arrives to make the journey to our customers. At Plum Creek, we focus on quality and service in everything we do.